Okay, we're going to look at an example here. Uh, we've got z as a function of x and y, and both x and y given as functions of t, and we're asked to find dz dt. So this is a typical chain rule problem, even if it doesn't say chain rule in the problem. The idea that you have one function defined in terms of some variables, and then those variables defined in terms of some other variables, and basically you want the derivative of the initial variable to one of these terminal variables. So we've talked about tree diagrams for these, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a tree diagram for this one. We've got z as a function of x and y, and both x and y as functions of t, and what I want here is dz dt. So we talked about using these tree diagrams to set up your chain rule. We're just going to be looking at the partial derivatives down the branches here, and then we're going to add them all up for the whole branches. So this is not really a proof, it's just an organizational structure to help you kind of get your chain rule written down correctly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write down the chain rule that we're going to use here, and then we'll actually go ahead and do it for this particular problem. All right, so here, uh, z is a function of two variables. So when I think about this first level of differentiation, uh, I can differentiate z with respect to x or y, and those would be partial derivatives, del z del x or del z del y, because z is a function of two variables. But x and y are both functions of only one variable, so when I think about these derivatives, derivative of x with respect to t and y with respect to t, these would be ordinary derivatives. So notice the different d symbols I used here, the del for the partial derivatives and the d for the ordinary derivatives. And so we're asked here to find dz dt, and notice the differentials that I used there as well. I used an ordinary d. When I think about z in terms of this terminal variable, there's only one variable here at the end, so that would be an ordinary derivative. So I'm going to write down the chain rule here, but the other thing I want you to notice when I write this down is the d's that I'm using here for the notation. So derivative of z with respect to t, only one terminal variable, so that's an ordinary derivative. And then that's going to be equal to del z del x times dx dt, multiplying down these branches. And then I'm going to add what I get from each branch, the contribution from each branch here. So del z del y times dy dt. Okay, so I want to actually find this derivative here, and then maybe we'll plug in a number and calculate that derivative at a particular value and just make sure that we can interpret what that means. So there's really two ways to do this problem. I'm going to go ahead and do it first using chain rule, and then I'll just talk about another way that you could do this problem. Um, but I want you to be able to write down the chain rule independently of whatever way you choose to go through doing the problem. So you should be able to write down the appropriate chain rule for whatever kind of combination of variables you have in the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead here and just kind of let the symbols tell us what to do. I'm going to find dz dt, so the first thing I need to find here is del z del x, so that's the derivative of my z function with respect to x. So in looking at that, when I differentiate this function with respect to x, I'm going to have to use product rule, so the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1 times this function plus this first function, and then times the derivative of this function with respect to x, so there's a little calc 1 chain rule involved there. So derivative of e to that variable power will be e to that variable power, and then times the derivative of what's inside that power, and remember, we're differentiating here with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared y with respect to x would be 2xy. Okay, so all of that is my del z del x that I've got written down for first here. And then I need to take this times dx dt, so I'm just going to let these symbols tell me what to do. dx dt is the derivative of the x function with respect to t, so the derivative of the cosine function is negative sine plus del z del y, 
Let me differentiate this function with respect to y. Notice that I'm not going to need product rule on that one. y only occurs in this function here, so I'm not going to need product rule here. I'll go ahead and go down here for my next part of my um, chain rule here. So the derivative of z with respect to y, this x out front will just come along. And then derivative of e to that variable power will be e to that variable power. And then times the derivative of what's inside there. And again, remember I'm differentiating with respect to y. So just have x squared. Right, so all of that is my del z del y. And then times dy dt. So dy dt, I'm going to use my y function and differentiate with respect to t. I'll get cosine of t. OK, so at this point, I have kind of a messy answer, but I actually have an answer for dz dt. Generally, you would probably like to have that perhaps a little bit cleaned up, but also you would probably like to have that all in terms of this terminal variable here, t. So notice I have x's, y's, and t's in this expression. Uh, depending on what I was going to do with it next, I might be plugging numbers in if I'm interested in a derivative at a particular value. But if I just want an expression, like here, I would probably like that to all be in terms of whatever this terminal variable is, t. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in. And as I do that, I'm going to do a little bit of algebraic simplifying here. Um, this simplifying would be optional. I'm going to notice that I have an e to the x squared y that I can factor out of everything here. So I'm going to factor out my e to the x squared y. And then as I do that, I'm going to substitute in my x and y for that. So when I factor out that e to the x squared y, I'll have e to the x squared would be cosine squared t. And y is sine t. All right, so that's what I've got factored out here. And then left inside, I'm going to have 1 times negative sine t, so times negative sine t. And then here I'll have a plus x times 2xy times negative sine t. So when I combine all of that, x times 2xy times negative sine t, I'll have a minus 2. And then my x times x will be cosine squared t. And then my y is sine t, and then I have times another sine t, so times sine squared t. Okay, so again, that's from simplifying this expression with my e to the x squared y factored out, and then I'm going to have plus. And then after the addition sign, I'll have x times x squared times cosine t, so x cubed times cosine t. x cubed would be cosine cubed t times another cosine t, cosine to the fourth of t. All right, so I simplified, uh, did some factoring and some algebra. So if you need to write that out in two separate steps, that would be OK. But this would be my expression that it really asked for here, dz dt in terms of t. I'm going to go ahead and evaluate this at a particular t value just to talk about what this answer might represent. So I'm going to look at this derivative at say t equals 0. Now if we were initially asked about t equals 0 in the problem, I could plug that in a little bit earlier. I would not necessarily have to do this simplifying, but uh, since this one just asked for dz dt, we really do need this expression that I have here. Um, but let's go ahead and evaluate this at t equals 0. So dz dt at t equals 0. Uh, so when I put in t equals 0, um, sine of 0 will be 0 and cosine of 0 will be 1. So I'll we'll have e to the 0, which is 1, times sine of 0 will be 0. This term here, cosine of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. So this whole term here will be 0. And then this last term here, cosine of 0 is 1, so I will get 1. So I get 1 right there. So what that means uh, in terms of what's happening with this function is that when t is equal to 0, dz dt is positive. So when t is equal to 0, 
Z is an increasing function of T. Remembering back from Calc 1 what it means when you have a derivative that's positive, a positive derivative means that Z is increasing with respect to T, with respect to T when T is equal to zero. And clearly when you put in different values for T, you're gonna get different signs on this derivative. You might get different numbers or different signs, positive or negative or zero. But always just thinking about what that value means. Okay, so there's one other way I could have done this problem also, um, but I do want you to go ahead and be able to write down the chain rule even if you do this problem in a different way. So some of you might recognize, and if you look in the textbook and some of the examples, they do this as well. If I had just put in my cosine and sine functions into the original expression at the very beginning, then I could have rewritten my original function z as a function of x and y. I could have just written that z completely in terms of t. So I would have had z equals cosine t times e to the x squared y cosine squared t sine t. And I could have just taken the derivative of this function with respect to t. It's a pretty complicated derivative. You've got two product rules and two chain rules going on at the same time. So you could do that. You would end up with the same thing that I have here in this box when you do that and simplify. Um, but for a lot of the applications of chain rule, we will probably want to be able to do them like this. So it's important even if you could do the problem that way and just use your Calc 1 knowledge to find those derivatives without using this multivariable chain rule. For a lot of the applications of chain rule, you're really maybe not gonna be actually finding derivatives, but you're really gonna be using this formula to relate one derivative to other derivatives. So we're gonna look at some application problems in some later videos that'll help you kind of wrap your head around why you might choose to do that. Okay, so practice some like this. We'll look at another video with some more variables and just kind of a different configuration on our chain rule diagram here. But really this is just kind of, once you get the structure here, just kind of letting the symbols tell you what to do and then kind of dealing with the messy algebra that sometimes turns up in these problems.